Real quick, here is a one-way t-test. The only reason you would use a one-way t-test is to compare a sample mean to the stated population mean or a stated claim or something like that. The best example I've actually seen used here was we had a student who was interested in the MMPI. It was normed up in Minnesota. So that means that almost everybody took it was, uh, was white. She wanted to do a little subgroup to compare the African-American scores on the MMPI to the overall scores, and she found a significant difference. So that's a perfect example of when to use a one-way t-test, also called a dependent t-test. But this is going to go real fast, okay? So you name your variable. This one is the football weight. Numeric, boom. No decimals. If they measured the weight in decimals, we would use decimals, but they didn't. And we told the computer that it was a scale variable. <clears throat> so we're ready to go. Oh, and then uh, I, I cut and pasted the data in already. Okay, so the DV is weights. Okay, so we're going to go to analyze. Compare means one sample t-test. Okay, there's our only test variable. Here's the big thing right here, testing the value. From the problem, the, the, the stated claim, the stated population mean was 278. So that what that is what's going to be tested is the 278, okay? And let's just click OK. Here's our output, right? How many there were? 20. Their mean was 285, standard deviation of about 12. And here is our t-test results down here. Let me pull them up for you. <laughs> but yeah, we got a t of 2.7, which is big. Remember, anything over 2 for a t-test is going to usually get you um, significance. So, right, there's your significant, there's your t-test statistic, there's your degrees of freedom, there's your significance, which is less than 0.05. So we get to say, yes, there's a significant difference between the sample, the chargers, the weight of their linemen, and the stated mean weight of all the linemen by the NFL. And that's about it. MGZ, out.